See, this ain't even really new math, though. Oh, my bad. Yo, welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about new math versus old math. All right? Now, we're actually going to talk about those terms, too, because there really is no new math, right? There might be a different method of uh, instruction or a different method of showing how to do multiplication or division or addition or subtraction, but... It's not as if something new was invented in the last five years or the last 10 years. And actually, a lot of this stuff, what the so-called new math does, it kind of just explains. One of the things it does is it explains why the math that we might have learned 30 years ago, why it actually works. It also explains the concept of it. All right. So let's check this out. Let's see. So we got 35 times 12. We want to know what the product is. Right. The product is the result you get when you multiply to multiply numbers together or expressions or terms. So 35 times 12. So. Somebody would probably say that the old math would, would require stack, stacking the numbers on top of each other like this. So like 35 on top and then the 12 underneath, draw the horizontal bar, put the X for multiplication. You start at the bottom number, the digit to the far right in the ones place. You do two times everything up here and then you do one times everything up here. So two times five is going to be 10. So I write the zero from the ones place and I carry a one to the next column over. Then I do two times three, which is six. And then I add the one, which is going to be seven. And then I go to the one. I do one times five, but I indent one space. Why do I indent one space? I indent one space because the number in this, the digit in this place is 10 times bigger than the digit in this place. So because it's 10 times bigger, we got to show that by moving the product over one space, which make, means that's 10 times bigger. That's why some teachers, when they teach this method, they tell the students to put a zero in this space right here. Right? So because if they didn't, then they would be essentially saying that one times five is five. And it is. But really, this is not a one. This is really a 10. In real life, this is a 10. The digit is a one, but it represents a 10. Right. It's how many tens you got. So we're really not doing one times five. We're really doing for real. For real, we're doing 10 times five. That's why we get five right here in the in the tens place. And that's why some teachers say to put a zero right here. So try to always understand why, like why you do what you do when you follow any different algorithms that you see in math. All right. So then we got. 1 times 3 or 10 times 3. Actually, this is 1 times 3 or 10 times 30, right? But we can just treat it like 1 times 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. And that 1, actually, we already used that 1. So we actually should get in the habit of crossing out the numbers that we carry once we already used them. So we got 1 times 3, and that's 3. We're going to put that down here. And then we're going to draw another horizontal line parallel to this line. Oh, that's a geometry lesson. Right there in the multiplication problem. I didn't even dig it. Anyway, so we got 0 plus 0 is 0. 7 plus 5 is 12, right? We got a million addition facts by heart. That's 12. So put the 2 right here, carry the 1. So 1 plus 3 is going to be 4. So that's 420, right? That's what we would call the old math, right? But there's other ways to do this, though, right? And sometimes you don't got a piece of paper. You don't got time or the resources to take out a piece of paper. You just need to, like, just do the math mentally, right? So I'm going to show you, like, what, what a lot of the new math is is mental math techniques and strategies that's what a lot of the so-called new math is so don't skip don't be scared of the new math embrace it run towards it you know what i mean um shout out to the late mayor harold washington too out of chicago right check him out do some research on mayor harold washington mayor harold washington out of chicago all right shout out to all my chicago people out there all right so um the new math or what we call the new math are just like tips and strategies for doing mental math. That's some of it. That's some of what the new math is. So like, dig this. If I was going to do 35 times 12, I might do this. I like to do what, I, what we call happy numbers. And when I say happy, I'm saying H-A-P-I, like happy, like the happy river, like an ancient Kemet, which is modern day Egypt. But our ancestors, when our ancestors lived there, um, it was called the Nile River, right, which runs through the continent of Africa was known as the Happy River, H-A-P-I, all right? So I like happy numbers, all right? So happy numbers end in zero. So I might break this 35 down into 30 plus five. Now, why am I doing that? I'm doing that because, again, always ask why. Like when you when you sit in a math class, always try to understand why you're doing the next step. Why the step makes sense? Why is it helpful? Why is the teacher showing you to do it this way? How does that help you? How does that help you? All right. And sometimes you got to figure that out on your own. The teacher might not even know. Sometimes, I mean, there's teachers out here that, you know, they just learned how to do stuff and nobody ever taught them why. And then they become teachers and they just pass it on. 
And when the student asks, well, why do you do it that way? They don't know. They're just like, yo, this is just, this is what we do, right? So if you're a teacher watching this, I challenge you to think about and do research and find out why you follow a certain method when you're doing certain math problems, right? Because that's helpful. That's going to help you. That's going to help you get a better understanding of the math, right? And then it's going to help your students get a better understanding of the math. And if you're a parent watching this, like, and you're trying to, you want to help be able to help your children with their homework, right? It's good for you to understand why, because then you can give a better explanation. Because then also with, in terms of the math, you're not just trying to drill them and try to make sure your children memorize all these steps. Because steps are a lot easier to memorize when there's a rationale behind the steps, when the steps actually make sense, right? So we want to make it make sense by showing why you're doing this. You know what I mean? Um, so the 35 breaks down into 30 plus 5, and then you still multiply them by 12, right? So now we use something called the distributive property, the distributive property. So what the distributive property says is that every number inside the parentheses gets multiplied by this number outside. So this is going to be easier mental math. If you know your multiplication facts, if you don't have your multiplication facts memorized, this is going to be difficult. That's why I tell people, I scream from the rooftops. Everybody should memorize their multiplication facts, at least up to 12 times 12. You should go past 12 times 12, but at a minimum, you need to know up to 12 times 12. You need to know what 1 times 1 is, and you need to know that 12 times 12 is 144 at every multiplication fact in between. All right? Just like the multiplication chart in the back of the marble composition notebooks. You need to at least know those. You should go up to 15 times 15, 20 times 20, 25 times 25, 30 times 30. It's no limit. You don't got to stop at 12 times 12, but at a minimum, you need to know that because why? Because that's going to help me do 30 times 12. Because I need to do 30 times 12. And 30 times 12 is the same thing as doing 3 times 12 and just attaching a zero at the end of that product. Again, 30 times 12 is the same thing as doing 3 times 12 and just attaching a zero at the end. So 3 times 12 is 36. I know that because I know my multiplication facts. 3 times 12 is 36. Then attach the zero. You get 360. And then again, I know my multiplication facts. So 5 times 12 is 60. And then we just add these two products together. Add these two products together. 30 times 12 is 360. 5 times 12 is 60. Add them together. Now, if I know that 36 plus 6 is 42, then 360 plus 60, think about as if, if we're counting money. $360 plus another $60. That's $420. So we still get 420, just like we did down here, right? Except this is a mental math method. Now, dig this. When we're talking about happy numbers, I made 35 into a happy number. I broke 35 or decomposed 35 into 30 plus 5. I also could have decomposed 12 and get a happy number because then I would have had 35 times 10 plus 2. So I love having options. That's one of the things I like about math. I like having options. And one of the things I recognize with what we call the new math is that the new math provides options to our children. So as adults, if you're an adult watching this, don't you like having options? Right? At least sometimes. So if you like having options, why would you not want your child to have options? We need our children to have options. And also, if your children have options with math, then what's going to happen is they're going to develop more mathematical fluency and also better number sense. And then having a strong foundation in mathematical fluency and number sense is going to help them and propel them when they go into subsequent math classes later on. Right. That math fluency and that number sense, they're going to be able to figure stuff out. When they take their next algebra class or their next geometry class or their pre-calculus or statistics or calculus or whatever, right? That math, that math fluence, that um, mathematical fluency and that number sense is going to be helpful. So anyway, we go back to the distributive property. So we do 35 times 10. 35 times 10 is the same thing as doing 35 times 1 and attach the zero at the end. So that's going to give me 30, 350 because 35 times 1 is just 35. And then we're going to do 35 times 2. Now, 35 times 2. Could be a little tricky, but you could also break down 35 and kind of decompose like we did up here, right? So if you don't know what 35 times 2 off the top of your head, that's cool, right? But just think about it as if it was 30 times 2 and 5 times 2. So 30 times 2 is 60, 5 times 2 is 10. What's 60 plus 10? Put them together, you get 70. Or think about it if it was 3.5 or $3.50. What's $3.50 times 2? 7. $7. So 35, 3.5 times 2 is 7. 35 times 2 is going to be 70. So now we got 35 times 2. That's going to be 70. And then add these two numbers together. 350 plus 70. You can break the 70 down. If you're doing this mentally, you might want to break the 70 down into 50 and 20. Now, why would I do 50 and 20? Well, because I know 350 plus 50 is going to give me 400. 
And then if I got 400 left, I got, two, I got 20 left over, not 400. But if I got 20 left over, then I'm going to just do 400 plus the 20 to get 420. So this is what I'm saying, right? Like, so look how we got 420, two different ways. So if you if you multiply two, a two-digit number by a two-digit number, this is a math trick I'm giving you. I'm putting you on. So new math, what we call new math, consists of a lot of math tricks and a lot of math strategies that are helpful. Like, it's kind of like back in the day, like, when we encounter somebody or in person or like, you know, you saw somebody on TV or heard about somebody that could do like complex calculations that you didn't know how to do and they could do them off the top of their head, they was doing stuff like this. They didn't tell you that that's what they was doing. They didn't give you their strategy. They didn't, they didn't, give, you the, they didn't give you the secret behind it or the cheat code behind it, but they just got to the answer. And then we would sit there, you know, as young children and be all impressed. Like, oh, wow, this person is so smart. It's not that they were so much smarter than us. It's just that they had the cheat codes. They had access to information. So what the so-called new math is doing, if it's taught properly, is give you, it gives your child access to the information so they can do mental math in their head real easily, right? So embrace it. Embrace it, right? When your children come home with the homework assignments, embrace it. You should want to learn it too because you should think about it like this. You should be like, yo, I wish somebody had taught me this 30 years ago. Instead of saying, well, I learned it this way 30 years ago, so I just want to stay here. I just want to do it this way. No, that's not enough. That's not enough. This is the bare minimum. A lot of us, we learn the bare minimum, right? We should want more. We need more. And now our children need more. So if you're a parent watching this, grandparent, uncle, aunt, whoever, big cousin, whatever, caregiver, your children need more. So in order for your children to have more, you have to have more. So we got to lead by example, right? So again, new math is different tips, different strategies to um, help us to do mental math so that we'll have number sense and mathematical fluency and we'll be able to win. And math will, math will become easier and we'll be able to run towards it and use math as a tool to help us and instead of a, something to run away from. So that's today's lesson. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you drop a comment or something. Share, whatever. Put it in your group chats. Let everybody know about it. Let everybody know what we're doing in all this math. And again, rest in peace. And shout out to Mayor Harold Washington out in Chicago. See y'all on the next video. Peace.